everybody. Um, my name is Matt Tobin, and welcome to our Liturgy of the Hours. Um, this is part of the staff at St. Griggs trying to develop a virtual church for you, the members of the parish community, to incorporate into your lives as we try and go through this unprecedented time um, of quarantine and lockdown uh, due to the COVID-19 virus. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Liturgy of the Hours, it is quite simply put, the prayer of the church. Um, it's what priests and religious pray. They pray it uh, five times a day. They do the office of readings, morning prayer, midday prayer, evening prayer, and night prayer. For the sake of this series, we're only going to be doing evening prayer. Um, it's a wonderful day to incorporate a little bit of prayer in your life, calm yourself after a stressful day, these are, after all, very stressful and unprecedented times and kind of refocus. And uh, I personally enjoy the Liturgy of the Hours because it's very structured and it helps you structure your day around prayer. Like I said, there's a morning, a midday, an evening, and a night prayer. So it helps you move through the day while incorporating prayer into your life. Um, just a little bit of history and insight to it. I want to read this passage, and it's from the decree um, of why we do this, why we pray the liturgy of the, author, uh, the liturgy of the hours. From ancient times, the church has had the custom of celebrating each day the liturgy of the hours. In this way, the church fulfills the Lord's precept to pray without ceasing, at once offering its praise to God the Father and interceding for the salvation of the world. The Second Vatican Council showed the importance of the traditional discipline of the Church and desired to renew that discipline. It was therefore very concerned to bring about a suitable restoration of this liturgy of prayer so that priests and other members of the Church in today's circumstances might celebrate it better and more effectively. So, to translate, the Church did this from its earliest days and now since the Second Vatican Council, we're trying to renew this culture of prayer in our daily lives to fulfill that uh, precept from our Lord that we should pray without ceasing. Um, so now we're going to go through a little bit of the format of Liturgy of the Hours, uh, just walk it through. And when we move to praying the Liturgy of the Hours, I'll break it down even further and I'll tell you which parts are coming up. Too. But for right now, the evening prayer uh, consists of an introduction, followed by a hymn, which for your sake, we will omit. I don't want to cause you any more pain and suffering than you, already, than you have already been through, and I think my singing will only compound upon that. So, we will omit the hymn for the time being. Um, then, in evening prayer, we have two psalms and a New Testament canticle each with their own antiphons. So the antiphons precede the recitation of the psalm, and then we repeat it when we're done with that psalm too. Then there's a reading, uh, a responsory, uh, a canticle, um, an evening prayer, it's the Magnificat. So it's the Canticle of Mary from the Gospel of Luke, and that has its own antiphon as well. Uh, then there's intercessions. As we said before, um, we're praying for the for the world, for the church, and for our communities. So we do have intercessory prayer as part of this. Uh, then we will recite the Lord's Prayer. Then there is a concluding prayer and a dismissal. So in many ways, it's a very structured, formatted prayer, but it's good um, because it lets us meditate and bring scripture into our daily lives. Um, now, I'm guessing that some of you don't have this book. This is called The Breviary. It contains um, a, a short version of the Divine Office or the Liturgy of the Hours. Uh, there is a four volume set. This is the one volume, so it's a little bit abbreviated, but it will do just fine. If you don't have this though, there is an app that you can download. It's for free, so don't worry about, you don't have to pay about for it or anything like that, but it's called iBreviary. There you go, this is what the home screen looks like. Um, so you can go ahead and download it at the App Store and you'll click on today so it'll come up as March 23rd, March 2020. 
Monday, March 23rd, Monday 2020. And we're on Monday of the fourth week in Lent. Then there's a button at the top left-hand corner of the screen that says pray. Go ahead and click that. Then a pop-up menu will come down. You're going to select breviary. And then those are all the offices that you can do. And then we're just going to be doing the evening prayer portion. So then it'll come up and it has that. And this is really, really good because it breaks it down. It has the introduction and then the hymn then the Psalms. So it's very easy to follow along on this app. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and start um, our prayer for Liturgy of the Hours. Um, feel free to follow along on the app if you have the book. Please follow along as well, or if you just want to sit and listen, that is perfectly acceptable as well. Um, so, uh, if you have the book, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the page numbers real quick. Um, so, for the Psalms, we're going to be starting on page... Hold on a second, there we go. 942 for the Psalms, then for the reading and the rest of uh, our evening prayer will be taking it from Monday Monday evening prayer from the fourth week of Lent and that is on page 346. So now we're going to start and there's a special introduction for the liturgy the hours. So we start uh, by going, God come to my assistance, Lord make haste to help me, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, we're omitting the hymn, so we're just going to go straight to the Psalms. And we're going to start with that first antiphon. And it is, Give thanks to the Lord, for his great love is without end. Now we'll move into the recita rec recitation of the psalm. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his love endures forever. Who alone has wrought marvelous works, for his love endures forever. Whose wisdom it was made the skies, for his love endures forever. Who fixed the earth firmly on the seas, for his love endures forever. It was he who made the great lights, for his love endures forever the sun to rule in the day, for his love endures forever, the moon and the stars in the night, for his love endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now we'll recite that first antiphon again. Give thanks to the Lord, for his great love is without end. Now we'll move to the next psalm. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. The firstborn of the Egyptians he smote, for his love endures forever. He brought Israel out from their midst, and for his love endures forever. Arm outstretched with power in his hand, for his love endures forever. He divided the Red Sea in two, for his love endures forever. He made Israel pass through the midst, for his love endures forever. He flung Pharaoh and his force into the sea, for his love endures forever. Through the desert he let his people he led, for his love endures forever. Nations in their greatness he struck, for his love endures forever. Kings in their splendor he slew, for his love endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his love endures forever. And Og, king of the Bashan, for his love endures forever. He let Israel inherit their land, for his love endures forever. On his servant their land he bestowed, for his love endures forever. He remembered us in our distress, for his love endures forever. And he snatched us away from our foes, for his love endures forever. He gives food to all living things, for his love endures forever. To the God of heaven give thanks, for his love endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty.
God planned in the fullness of time to restore all things in Christ. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time to bring all things into one in him, in the heavens and on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God planned in the fullness of time to restore all things in Christ. Now we move on to the reading. Uh, today it is from uh, the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers, I beg you through the mercy of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may judge what is God's will, what is pleasing, per what is good, pleasing, and perfect. Now we'll move on to re the responsory. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. I make my prayer for mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To you, O Lord, I make my prayer for mercy. Now we'll move on to the canticle of Mary, and it has its own antiphon, so we'll go ahead and do that now. The Father realized that it was at that very hour when Jesus had told him, Your son will live, and he and all his household became believers. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Father realized that it was at that very hour when Jesus had told him, your son will live, and he and all his household became believers. Now we move on to the, interse uh, the intercessions part of our evening prayer. Glory, glory to God the Father, who has promised through his Son to grant what is asked by those who pray together. With confidence in this promise, let us pray. Lord, you gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai and brought it to perfection in your anointed one. May all recognize the law written on our hearts and keep it faithfully as a covenant. Give those in authority a true concern for their brothers and sisters entrusted to their care and inspire the hearts of the people to support their leaders. Strengthen with your spirit the minds and hearts of missionaries and raise up a great company to help them from every nation. Give your grace to children that they may grow in your favor, and to young people that they may reach their full stature by loving you and keeping your commandments. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in your peace. Bring them at last to eternal life. And now we say together the Our Father. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now we have our concluding prayer. Father, Creator, you give the world new life by your sacraments. May we, your church, grow in your life and continue to receive them, to receive your help on earth. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. That concludes our Liturgy of the Hours for Monday, week four in Lent. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to doing this again tomorrow with you all. Um, please stay safe, and God bless.